Well, good morning. It is Sunday the 17th of June and you're back with the Crypto Divas again to talk about good week, bad week. And with me is Lena Lass Bilson, all the way from Estonia. Yeah. Hi, Lena. So I want to kick off, first of all, and I think you probably have this on your news as well. The SEC came out and said Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities. Hooray! Finally some movement. Um, it was said by William Hinman. He's the head of Division of Corporation Finance in the SEC in San Francisco. And basically, the whole Howey test we know about, you know, how do you know if, if it's a security or not? Typically, if it can be traded freely, if it will increase in value and to the benefit of the original holding organization. So he's made the point that uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities because uh, they are decentralized. There's no central entity uh, benefiting from the rise in value of these two coins. That's good news. We'll see what happens, obviously, of course, with um, the other coins, the ERC20 coins and other platforms. It'll be interesting. But I was just saying that to you earlier, I was at the uh, uh, Blockchain 360 conference in Excel in London last week. And um, there's a very interesting man, John Salmon. He's a lawyer. He's a uh, technology partner with Hogan Lovells. And he was saying, just this whole interesting, he said, in, in the UK, um, Wimbledon uh, Tennis Club, very famous, every five years or so, they issue debentures, which are freely tradable and go up in value. And no one's trying to police them like security. So it's an interesting point. So that's good news from the SEC. How about you, Lena? Oh, no, Lena. Hi, you've gone, you've frozen on me. Oh, you're back. Oh, over to you, Lena. Yeah, sorry. Internet connection here is, is not great. So I, I pretty much missed everything you said after the conference. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's okay. It's just just about the SEC. That was the news. Uh, what, what, what good news do you have? Yeah, well, yeah, the, to comment on the SEC one as well, that's obviously great news. But, you know, crypto people also are being a bit skeptical, saying that the fact that he said it doesn't legally mean anything. So a federal court may, you know, decide otherwise. But it is a very, very good thing. And, you know, hopefully we don't have to be as, you know, uh, skeptic about it and, and it will all be great. Um, so let's look at, uh, what did I have here? Um, Sweden mm. has um, demoed a live transaction on a blockchain on the, their land registry. So they're doing a pilot project, uh, working with many startups, government entities, and yeah, they have uh, are basically trying to put their land register on, on blockchain and uh, they, have just, just kind of launched the first one. It's a smart contract. It's uh, GDPR compliant. And, you know, I'm, I'm very happy for them. That is brilliant. Because we said before, uh, 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 70% of the world has tenuous title to their homes. So this could be a huge, and obviously in Sweden, people are, tend not to lose their homes because the, the, the deeds are lost. But it's a great thing if, if Sweden can do it, then someplace like, Nigeria could do it or you know in Africa where there's, there's less there's less certainties that's excellent news and then I'm going to the east for my piece of news next Bank of Thailand now before Thailand of course uh, banned in May they banned ICOs and cryptocurrencies then they came out they bought a framework the Thai uh, Securities and Exchange Commission brought out a framework it's quite strict but it's good they're actually recognizing them now but they need to do certain things like hold their the, the same business for one year they need to have a balance a positive balance in the bank and while they don't mind um, institutional investors putting any money in, they have limited the amount that retail, they want to protect them. That's, that's good news. And then uh, last week, the Bank of Thailand announced they're going to adopt blockchain technology. It's part of the uh, uh, Thailand Blockchain Community Initiative. It's uh, 14 Thai banks and seven businesses. And the idea is that they want to look, about, uh, look at, at interbank settlements on blockchain. So that's nice from, from a region that's gone from being, you know, ban, ban, ban. And now they saying, here's a framework. We're going to work with you guys. So that's very positive as well. Mm -hmm. I've got uh, sort of try to end on a bad note here. <laughs> so obviously Bitcoin prices and crypto's prices went down significantly uh, this week. Mm -hmm. uh, Bitcoin uh, sort of bottomed out at 6,100. That was following after South Korea's uh, exchange coin rail got hacked and lost about 28 million uh, worth of cryptocurrency. Yeah. So, yeah, they're uh, they're um, in investigation about what had happened. But yeah, Bitcoin uh, went down to six thousand one hundred, and uh, up to now, still hasn't really recovered. It's testing the levels of six thousand five hundred currently, I believe. 
Yes, because the whole market cap is under uh, 400 now, isn't it? It's, oh, it's under 300. Actually, maybe under 300. I, I looked at it earlier. Oh, I've lost it now. But um, it's, it's, it's gone down quite significantly. And it hasn't, even with the SEC announcement, they're saying, well, I guess, again, it's still, it's still a young market. It's still immature. Everything's coupled together. Where am I looking at here? It's under. Oh, where's it gone? It's not loading properly, but I, I, it's, it's, yes, it's, it's under 300 million, uh, billion. So that's, that's, that is a, a significant drop. And of course, everything drops once Bitcoin drops. But um, yeah. yeah, hopefully this volatility will ease up. I think exchanges are definitely the weak point at the moment because they're being hacked left, right and center. And they need to have more security. Of course, they do to protect people's money. So hopefully, I'm hoping that at the end of the year, we have a bit of a rally. It's a bit, a bit of a long term coming. And um, another piece of bad news was we talked about EOS, EOS last week, and they announced their mainnet. And it was up for 48 hours and there was a big huge bug and then they took it offline so that wasn't so, such good news because it was such a hype beforehand so i hope they get their act together and uh, i think it was yesterday i'm not quite sure it's back up since uh, but i haven't actually seen anything uh, so i think i haven't looked this morning i think it is back up it was a backup. Uh, good good but you know it's uh, new tech you're gonna have some bugs Yes, yeah, yeah, that was a big one, but yeah, there was, was a backup, and and they were they were communicating very clearly, certainly with their community, so that was positive. They didn't run away. Yeah. So um, I have some good news now. Um, you know how we always say the most important thing to end the volatility is going to be mass adoption. So and you know that because you've been talking about this for a long, long time. Um, but I see there is a new film in the offing, a crypto film. It's called Crypto. It's a working title, and they've got a big name to head it up. One of the Gilmore Girls. I don't watch the series, but it's very popular. With you watch the Gilmore Girls. I, I have seen it, but I'm, you know, not regularly, but no. I know of them, you know. It's fam they're famous. My kids watch it, so it's, it's a big brand. But one of the actresses, Alexis Bledel, I think her name is, she's going to be uh, uh, starring in the film. And it's nice because the last sort of big film we had was, well, the documentary was Banking on Bitcoin. And I actually met Nick Spanis in the Middle East last month. So that was interesting to meet the man in the film. So the more, uh, well, the more uh, programs, you know, mainstream programs and films, are talking about Bitcoin and, and, and the cryptocurrency markets the best. That's, that's a positive in my book. Yeah, definitely. Um, Silicon Valley kind of referenced uh, blockchain on there. Uh, yeah. Richard, the, the main character, said that he wants to build a decentralized internet and then kind of on the board you could see glimpses of blockchain and smart contracts. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, If we get it into like uh, pop culture as well, that would definitely help a lot. Yes, yeah. And I, I have another good, this is my last piece of news actually, another good story. In a German cocktail bar, it's a, it's a chain, there's like 41 outlets and they employ nearly a thousand people. It's a big one. They're now doing a blockchain uh, rewards program. And the nice thing is that uh, if you spend money with them, they give you their coin back. It's an ERC20 coin. The thing I love about it is the people who are doing it is Quibi. And I actually interviewed the, the, the Quibi uh, ICO mm, back in January, I think it was. And it's run by uh, Gabriel Giancola. He's an Italian and himself and his brother and his mom. So it's family business based in Switzerland. And they, their app is um, it's, it's a blockchain rewards loyalty program. So that's nice to see a real life working example. And, you know, buy cocktails, get coins. That sounds nice. I don't mind that. I, I would. <laughs> Definitely. So um, do you need any other news? I'm, that's all me done. That's, I, I was waiting to at Excel. That's why I, 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 I'm sorry. That's pretty much all I have. I also noticed this morning that uh, uh, there's a new exchange launching in Estonia. Uh, so oh, Estonia wow. Giving it uh, um, a license to operate, and they have. St I think they're about to launch their beta uh, in the next few days. So that's, that's exciting for me because we now have a proper our own exchange here. Hopefully. Well, actually, uh, there is one other piece of news I need to add in. Actually, um, last week we had a big uh, money conf conference here in Dublin. I missed it because I was in London, but um, they launched uh, uh, Blockchain Ireland. Because you know what I said before, Ireland's a bit slow. You know, we're, we're very good before with the fintech, but we're a bit slow in the blockchain. I didn't realize there's actually an Irish uh, it's Blockchain Experts Association. It's been going for three years, but they kind of met, they weren't, weren't very public, but they've come out now, they launched Blockchain Ireland, and it's backed by, well, consensus is behind it too. Consensus is open new offices in Dublin. They're a huge player, of course. Um, and then, but Enterprise Ireland and IDA, so two official government bodies getting involved. And I'm going to the next meetup on Tuesday morning. It's a big session. So... I'll be, I'll be able to report back next week. That's very exciting because I didn't realize there were so many people involved in blockchain. That's three years. That's pretty handy. So, and they've come to the surface now. So I'm pretty much more enthused about Ireland not missing the boat. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's great news. It, it always helps, uh, you know, because we need to work with the governments and also they can, they can help us out. And if they start adopting the tech, then 
you know, others will follow too. Yes. So that's really yeah, that's cool. So that's all my news. Do you have any other bits and pieces or? No, I'm, uh, that's, that's all for mine. So would you so, say a good week or a bad week? What do you think? Well, I mean, if you look at the price, we'd have to say bad week. But, mm -hmm. you know, there's been some great stuff. So publicly announcing that Ethereum and Bitcoin aren't security, yeah. that's, that's good, of course. But, you know, price-wise, if, if you're an investor, you're probably not too happy this week. On the other hand, low prices, you can buy in again. So hard to yeah. say. Uh, nothing catastrophic. Of course, the hacking of the exchange was a problem again. And hopefully <clears throat> the newer exchanges, you know, get their act together. Yeah. Uh, so probably uh, on that note, maybe on that bit of a bad side, but you know, there's hope. Well, do you know, I had the two fabulous days. I was chairing that conference in the Excel Center in London, and it was back to back blockchain. It was uh, packed. The theater was packed the entire two days. Really interesting people from Pillar, from Consensus, from oh, I, know, I can't remember. There were so many people talking the whole time. So many panels on regulation, on use cases. And it was a fascinating two days. So I'm, I'm still buzzed up. I think it's a good week because I'm like, I'm exhausted, but I'm also buzzed up from chatting with so many exciting people. And, you know, we're going to change the world. <laughs> yeah, really. That's brilliant. Okay, so we have to say half and half then. It's a, a medium week. <laughs> yeah, let's call, it, let's call it an average week in crypto. <laughs> which, is, which is full of ups and downs, which is what the crypto world is. Okay, that's great. So we'll see you next week, next Sunday. And have a great week in Estonia and have a great week here in Ireland and we'll chat on Sunday. Yeah, everyone, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Brilliant. Bye thank soon. you, William. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh. Sorry.